Hello, today we are talking about all things resumes. So I just went through this entire process where I was revamping my resume, applied to different roles, and I just started at a new company about three months ago. Best decision I've ever made. It's a startup called Drizzly that's under Uber. I've thoroughly enjoyed all of my time and honestly, getting in front of the interviewers is the most important part and your resume is your gateway to doing that. So you need to have the best resume, especially in tech, it's so competitive. So let's go through everything you need to know. I'm to go through non-negotiables, your resume structure, and my exact resume. I only applied to about 10 different startups and literally 80% of them got back to me. And I think it's just because I've gamed my resume in the right way. So let's get straight into it. Let's go into non-negotiables before we even think about structuring your resume. If you have less than 10 to 15 years of work experience, your resume better be one page. That's it, literally a non-negotiable. Two, there's a very big difference between embellishing your work kind of adding a little something in there and lying about your work. Do not lie about your work. Don't take credit for other people's projects. That's just a big no. The third, if you're listing like literally 20 to 30 different technical skills out, you better know every single one of those skills immaculately if you're gonna waste so much of your precious resume space because you have such limited space in your resume. I'd rather know the top five skills or the top 10 skills that you're extremely proficient in. Like if you've literally written in JavaScript once, please don't add that to your resume. You want to use the skills space to really tailor your story and show them what you're the most proficient at and what you're hoping to add to their team. And last non-negotiable, like if you just have a blank piece of paper that you started writing your resume out in, that's a big note. You wanna look as professional as possible. And honestly, I got my resume template off of Etsy, literally $5, best $5 I've ever spent because it is such a beautiful resume with all of the formatting done for me already. So just make sure you have the right resume format and template. Going into the structure of resumes, my resume has four headers, work experience, technical skills, education, and interests. I added these because that's what made the most sense to me. But my previous resume headers include projects, publications, and so many different things because I was straight out of college trying to get my first job and I had a different set of skills then. Right now, I really wanted to emphasize my work experience as well as my technical skills and use the interest section to show them who I am as a person. Other sections that you can can include our summary, projects, certifications, as well as your publications if you want to. You really have to figure out what kind of narrative you're trying to create. There is no set way to go about this. And I know a lot of people talk about needing a summary section. Honestly, I don't see much of a benefit from a summary section. That's why I included interests because my interests show them who I am and my work experience speaks to my qualifications as a good data scientist. So I never really had to summarize it because once you talk to me, you know what kind of person I am, the kind of teams I fit into, the kind of work I do. So I just want my resume to get me in front of someone so I could really wow them in the interview process. Okay, let's start with work experience. The first thing you have to stop being vague. The amount of resumes I've seen where people are vague and they say that they did a project, but I don't understand why that project's important, how it relates to the larger company goals and what the quantified results of that project were. Tell me what you did, why you did it, and what the quantified results are all in one point. You really wanna quantify your results and showcase all of the specialized skills that you've gained or used throughout this project. Let's go through my first point as an example. Spearheading research and creation of a new anomaly detection production level Python model to better detect and prioritize metering equipment issues by severity within 40,000 plus Nielsen homes to ensure highest quality panelist data for Nielsen's TB ratings. Research involves decision trees, clustering, autoencoders, feature engineering. So this is a mouthful, but this really sums up a massive undertaking. The biggest project I've ever worked on, something I completely did by myself design start to finish. And I go into how impactful this is going to be. This is a first machine learning model that could potentially impact Nielsen's TV ratings by ensuring data quality. And Nielsen's TV ratings are the biggest thing that they do at the company. So honestly, like this is just about showing them the value of your work and relating the direct like output of your work to some larger company goal. So never forget, talk about what you did, why you did it and what the results were and 
relate all of that to the company goal if possible. That's the structure you should have for each point. The next part of work experience, I'd say don't include more than two to three different experience headers. If you have way more, potentially just list them at the bottom of your work experience as other roles 2015 to 2018 include and just list your other roles in the company those roles were in. So I'd say a good rule of thumb, 40% of your resume should be work experience, 20 to 30% skills. Like you really want about 70 to 80% of your resume really emphasizing your work in however many headers that requires, whether you want to split it between work experience, projects, etc. Really like think 70 to 80%, the other 20%, show them who you are as a person, what you do outside of work and why that makes you a better fit for this role. The last point I will say about work experience is that you really want to detail the most important projects that you've worked on under each header. And a great way to do this and really personalize this to the role you're applying to, have a master resume template with like, you know, two, three pages, every possible point you could have in it. That would be your master template and choose the right points based on the job description of the role you're applying to. So having a master resume template that has every possible point you can use, tailoring that to the job description and creating a personalized resume for that role, while it may take you an extra 10 minutes is so worth it. And I think that's why people reached out back to me because I tailored my resume to exactly what they were looking for in the role based on my previous work. Just a quick interjection to remind you to smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, help the YouTube algorithm, thank you. Moving on to the next section, technical skills. This is a very important section if you're in tech. And I personally really wanted to emphasize communication and my storytelling skills using the data. Personally, as a data scientist, my ability to communicate with different stakeholders, really design a project end to end, not just the code, but also describe why this is so valuable to the company is probably my biggest skill. And that's really what I wanted to emphasize in this section. Of course, I program mostly in Python. I build machine learning models end to end. Like, of course I'm good, at, maybe not good, but I am decent at coding. And I really wanted to use this section to talk about how I really enjoy learning quickly, how I love communicating my findings and how I love being part of that end to end process. So for doing that, I just list the skills I'm good at, you know, the Python, the data visualization, the querying, but then I have a quick short sentence that says, I am a fast and enthusiastic learner who enjoys synthesizing large amounts of research and data insight into a concise and robust story for presentations to stakeholders and white papers. I really wanted to emphasize that. So that's what I did here. And you should do whatever you think is right for you, but you need to figure out what the narrative you're trying to tell is and show them how you're different from every other candidate. For me, it was really my writing and storytelling. Moving on to education. This one is honestly very straightforward. Include your education. I just included that I graduated with honors. I co-founded a student organization on campus. I was a science writer that had a publication and I included some relevant coursework because again, I'm only 2.5 years out of college. So this is pretty relevant for me. And lastly, the interest section. Honestly, this was so important to me because this entire section shows my entrepreneurial side and it just paints a picture of who I am, what I do with my free time. I think that's so important because you really want to distinguish yourself from other people. And I think an interest section is a way better place to do that rather than a summary section, but that's just my opinion. I think the fact that I am an educational content creator, things like that just show that I'm so passionate about things like outside of work as well. Personally, like education, whether it's at work or outside is probably one of my biggest pillars. And I really wanted to emphasize that because that's what I care about, constant learning. And then I talked about being an AP independent research mentor, which I did for about eight to 10 months, where I literally mentored a student on creating a classification model between stars and galaxies, which is so relevant to my major, what I've done in the past and what I'm doing now as a data scientist. I thought that was a great cross-functional point to include. That's pretty much it for everything I have when it comes to how you can potentially better your resume, what a data scientist resume even looks like, and how I got the roles that I got. Don't forget to subscribe and smash like if you haven't already, and I will see you guys at my next video. Don't forget to comment video ideas if you have any. Thank <laughs> you.